Welcome to the International Teacher Podcast with your host, Greg, the single guy, and Matt, the family guy. We're recording episodes from around the globe to tell you about the best kept secret in education. That's right, it's teaching overseas. We're glad to have you. Well, you know, this is, is our first episode here, Matt. We're the hosts on the International Teacher Podcast, and I think it's fantastic to be here with you. We're in different cities right now, but we are working together on this podcast. I love it. You're Absolutely. allowed to insert humor anytime, anytime you want, Matt. We might be an hour away, but we are united in cause. I think, or something like that. Uh, yeah, it is exciting. It's exciting also to think millions of people are going to to listen to this and we're going to have worldwide reach. It's, uh, you know, it's just a short track to start them for us, but we got to start somewhere. Well, it's also a niche, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I've been looking online for international teacher podcasts and I can't find more than like four. Honestly, I don't spend much time outside sports podcasts or Oprah podcasts so uh i haven't really checked but i'm gonna take your word on. well oprah is really important so i'm glad you're listening to her podcast <laughs> it nourishes the soul okay <laughs> don't judge me it nourishes <laughs> it nourishes the soul man well sometimes tell- a guy just needs to lock his office door <laughs> and listen to oprah's wisdom i'm people are gonna go check it out if you haven't listened to oprah's uh soul search or something like that i don't mean to i don't know if we can plug other podcasts on our podcast but i think we can i think we can we are our own hosts here you know this is this is going to be all over los angeles i think people are going to listen to this in their cars on the way to school and on the way to work you know come on man we have to agree we're not going to mention the company though remember that's our one caveat Mm. we're not allowed to mention it so we're working on an island here and I, I think we can mention the country, right? I don't think we can either. We can say the geographical area. Okay, so we're in the Middle East. We can say that. Yes. All right. And I just, our Middle listeners East. need to understand it's a company thing. We just can't do it. We're not shy about where we teach. We're going to talk about other schools, though, right? We're going to talk about where we've taught around the world in other schools because we're not there right now. Yeah, I think we need to talk about where we've been. You obviously way more than me, but. Uh, Talk about the other schools, maybe different types of schools. It's about quality, Matt. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. That's true. That's that's so true. Uh, we definitely need to talk about what the journey is like as you're transitioning from teaching in the United States to moving overseas. Or I te- thought sorry. you were going to say Did something you, like your you, transgender sorry, journey, didn't... Matt. <laughs> no, no. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to be so so nationalistic on that one. Whether you're in the UK teaching or, you know, South Africa, South Korea, uh, North America, there's always a transition that goes into this that I think we'll definitely talk about that I was not prepared for. I don't know about you, but that's definitely fodder for another episode. Well, we should probably talk about like who our listeners we think should be listening to this episode and, and further episodes along down the line. I was looking at it like, don't get me wrong here, but I think, Matt, first of all, it's pure entertainment right? We are entertaining people. Now, secondly, of course, of course and they, if they want to to log in and listen to our podcast, each one's going to be different. They might be from different parts of the world and sure. we are already international, but other friends of ours are teaching overseas and we're going to include them in our episodes. And that's the first kind of person like my buddy, Joe back home. He just wants to hear stories, right? Sure. I love listening yeah. to your stories, Matt. When we your family goes one direction, I go the other. It's just about stories. Yeah, it sure is. And also, we may want to use aliases for the names of coworkers that we tell stories about too, because we don't want to dish dirt on anybody. But there's some great coworker stories as right. well. Right. We can we can give them nicknames, you know, and like Gern Blanston, and you know, we can you know talk there about my friend, you know, Bob Sacamano. And can we do that <laughs> online too or not? <laughs> I think I think we could do that. I think that's a definite bonus. Or so Dr. Rosen Rosen, right? Who would want to possibly listen to us? You got teachers, 
teachers that want to go overseas. Well, like there's teachers that were in the, they're in the United States now or Canada and other places we don't need to mention because we're from the U.S. But other teachers in the U.S. that are teaching there that might want to know what it's like to live overseas and teach and do what they're doing now, but do it in a different country. I think I would right? also. I would also throw out to another demographic of people who maybe never even considered going overseas, for example, like me. And I am one of those people who never, ever, like if you could picture one human being who would who would have been picked never to go live in a different country or let alone different state, I would have probably fit that bill. You'd probably also. be still in the now, same county if you hadn't have found out about this. <laughs> no, we got, yeah, those county lines shrunk, so it was time to go. Um, you know who else? I I think family members who, who have somebody going overseas, I think family members also need to, um, maybe if they're interested in what is my loved one getting into, this might be something they want to listen to. And there's, there's different levels of safety. I think they, the more, you know, about this kind of a career and the more stories you hear from all different countries and every country is different, every school is different and every family or individual has a different experience. But if families were listening into our show, they would be able to understand that we go bowling on the weekend or we go to the ice hockey rink. I mean, we're in the middle of a desert, but, you know, you go and play hockey with your kids, don't you, Matt? Right. And that's something uh, that's that's yeah. something that's reassuring to parents and family members to know about what we do overseas. It's it's no normal life in, in some respects. That's a good yeah, point. In some, yeah, you're doing all the normal. You're Well, in some cases, you're doing a lot of the normal things that you would if you were at home, but also some not so very normal things. But It's so hard not to say certain things about where we work, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you know, and it's funny because it's those things that when you first get there, you can't believe you're actually doing it. Like we're actually doing this, but then that becomes normalized. And then that becomes your new Saturday. Let me give you a quick example. So March Madness is going on, okay? I've complained for years that I haven't had the ability to watch the March Madness basketball games, and this year I just totally forgot they were on. And I have total full access to watch every one of the games, and I just was like, oh, my gosh, it's already the Final Four, like or the Elite Eight, or And being time zones away, sometimes it's difficult to get the game, to, to actually wake up and watch the game live, or, you know, for yes. whatever reason, you haven't been able to have access to it. And I remember in yes. Venezuela, we didn't always have power to watch a game, right? <laughs> so well, there's always a generator, though. Always right. a generator. Always a generator. So, yeah, that's a great example. So families might want to tune in. I have one other thing. You know, one of my passions is is, tra- is teaching other people how to become an international educator. So if somebody's in, in college right now and they're learning to be a teacher – and they might want to start listening to this show to find out what it's like to actually be overseas. Because when I was teaching, uh, learning how to be a teacher, I didn't know anything about it. You know, I went to a cocktail party and found out about this by chance. <laughs> right? And there, there's no information out there either. There's nothing about it. So I think this is going to be a good yeah. information for people that are thinking about it as teachers or would be teachers or teacher at college that they might want to get into international teaching. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. And had I known about this, this is something I would have been definitely interested in as a college graduate. Absolutely. Because, you know, if you think about all the kids that are struggling just to find schools to work at in the U.S., and then there's this whole untapped market of you've got the opportunity to travel, to be around new people, new places, and you're able to get some legitimate job experience. I mean, yeah, I'm I, I, a college student who's unattached would surely jump at something like this. I tell you one thing, though. One thing that this show may not be for is for somebody that's just thinking about, like, going down to Mexico and teaching for teaching English for a month or something. I don't think this is going to be geared towards them because we're really both of us are certified teachers in the U.S., And I think that people that are the schools that we talk about are mainly certified schools. And we can go into that in another episode real deep and explain all of that. And I want to. I want to explain some of those differences. But this may not be a podcast for someone like that to listen to because we're not just flying, you know, around and just spending a month here and there and going to Africa and teaching in the sticks. We're actually teaching at accredited schools. And we're talking about life overseas, living here as it's a job It's that we're also doing. Sure. We're not just living somewhere and scrounging. You know, we're, we're making good money overseas. 
somebody somebody who's looking to do that though what you were just talking about though is they might benefit from just hearing about some of the things they're still going to experience a lot of the things you and I had to experience being new people in a new country. That's and true. Maybe we can make people, maybe if we can make, make people aware of that, like, Hey, when you get here, the well, <laughs> the welcome committee is not going to be rolled out for you. Plan on being the only person who speaks your language. And, uh, unless you know, you're at school. Yeah. Yeah. So they might actually, they may actually benefit from that. I don't know. That's true. So, so far we've got a couple of audiences. We have the pure content, like the pure value of entertainment, like my buddy, Joe, we're going to have the, the, we're going to have the teachers, actually the teachers overseas already might tune into us and want to be guests on our show. I forgot to mention that, but yeah, teachers that are interested and didn't know about overseas might be a second audience. The teachers that are coming up that, that might want to teach overseas and learn about overseas teaching would be our third category. and then. I don't know if there's any other categories. I think that's pretty well our listener base that we can think of so far, right? Well, obviously, former, well, present overseas teachers, right. former overseas teachers, and because those it, families, it's not all yeah. just a how. It's not all just a how to. So, for example, um, my students here at school during study hall, we don't always get to study hall, but they love my police stories from Venezuela, and so I've spent numerous study halls talking about my run-ins with the law. And, um, so I think that, I mean, just general stories about what this is like. And also I think what me, we need to do with the cast of characters, what we've come along over the years is I think it would help. We push, we should put some of them on here too. And just, Oh, that's my goal plan. You saw my plan, my goal for this, the the future episodes, we're going to put a cast of characters here from around the world And if not from around the world at that time, they might be even here at school with us now that talk about schools they've been to in the past. And that's going to be like I I could talk for hours with each one of those people I've met in my life, as well as you. We could talk for hours about experiences in different parts of the world, whether it's traveling or teaching there and family or individual. You know, we have so many stories to share. So it's going to be a pure entertainment value, too. You know what I really wish we had access to is the sheer number of people you and I have met at dive shops that we've been to that would have made amazing interviewees. I'll be honest with you right now. Right yeah, now, two parlors, man. dive shops, and <laughs> support group. It's probably going to be a. Best. It's probably going to be a different dive. It's going to be a whole dive experience too, I guess. Right, divers around the yeah. world. We might have to do a whole separate podcast for just you know diving stories. But you know what? Sure. I can't get out of my head right now, Matt. And maybe the listeners are in the same place I am. But you mentioned police stories. Can you just throw yes. a quick one out for the audience? I mean, just give us a taste of a story from overseas. <laughs> and I think you said it was Venezuela, right? One, yeah, what, one of my favorite police stories involves you, <laughs> and I think you might have, to, might have to help tell this story. So anybody that's known you, when you were in Venezuela, you had this little Ford Fiesta, little silver stick shift hatchback that do you we have drive. a safe Ford word? Do we have a safe What's word that? here, or do we just edit out later if we come up to a part where we really don't want to share it? It's like you're talking, and I want to say a safe word, you know, like, I don't know, like, bamboozle or you know chicago or something leghorn Foghorn, <laughs> leghorn. <laughs> i'm sorry to interrupt your story continue your story you're right i had that little yeah i had that little ford escort so my, one of my favorite stories is anybody that's ridden in the car with you or been around you or knows you knows you're not a huge fan of shoes and so anybody that's ridden in a car with greg knows that greg drives his car without his shoes on barefoot or you'll see him in his classroom working barefoot and funny thing is, Greg was getting up one morning to go to work, put on your dress pants, your dress shirt, your tie, looking good. You sling your bag over your shoulder and you walk out of your apartment carrying your dress shoes. Correct. And get in the car, throw everything in there, and off you go to work, barefoot, in your car, fully dressed. You're looking good. And you get pulled over by the police. And what time I had was a tie this? on. 630 in the morning? You used to go super early. 6, 615 in the morning, sure. whatever? Sure. Oh, okay. Now... Let's not pass judgment on our brethren here, but in the country we lived in, if you wanted to enjoy a certain cerveza, 
say on the car ride home from work, that was not frowned upon by the local law enforcement. Not and safe, so, but not frowned upon. Yes. Being a bachelor and not having a need to really clean the car out, there may have been <laughs> a, a dozen or so bottles rolling around your passenger seat. And so you got pulled over at what time? 6.15 in the morning? I think it was like 5.30 because if, if I go any earlier, of course, you know, you can get held up in that country, in that city, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. And so obviously Greg uh, gets pulled over, screeches to a halt. And when he hits, you know, the brakes, you hear tink, 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 as all of the beer bottles slide forward to the front of the car. Because I went through three stoplights, right? There was no traffic, so I went through the stoplights. I can't stop at the stoplight because if you do, you can get held up at gunpoint. And that was one of the reasons that I just went through all. But I didn't know the guy was following me through those five, those three stoplights, right? That's why I got pulled over. Right. But then we had a well, conversation and, and, about why I got pulled over, right? Continue your story. So what, Go did, ahead. what did he ask you? What did he ask you? Well, first he asked me if I had a gun, right? <laughs> and I said Tiene no. Fuego? Tiene fuego? Right. And then he said, why oh. am I not wearing shoes? Which I love. Right. It, it, he went from gun to shoes, right? And he asked me for paperwork. And, of course, it was a stack of paper. You know, the paperwork that I had in the glove compartment was extensive because of its history. But uh, that's another story, right? And Yeah, I think the car was four years old. Yeah, so and this is all in Spanish. I mean, by that time, you and I were both really fluent in Spanish, and I, I had this discussion with him, and he asked me, do you have a gun? I said, no. He said, do you have sh why don't you have shoes on? I said, because I drive without my shoes. I have them right here. And he wanted to see paperwork, and he's looking through them, and he looks at me, and he says, where are your shoes? <laughs> Again. <laughs> And, well, clearly, uh, you were talking to one of the detectives. Clear, <laughs> clearly, clearly. Maybe even the unit head. I don't even know. Yeah, that is my story, though. It was a long conversation. He went through all that paperwork, and he asked me about my shoes probably four or five times, and he did ask me why I went through the stoplights. And I looked at him. I said, you know why I went through the stoplights. And he looked at me, and he goes, oh, you're right. Don't stop at the stoplights this early. That's yeah, a fun story. Yeah. And and what a lot of what a lot of people don't realize, well, it's five thirty in the morning. I mean, that can't be that dangerous when you're driving to work. Well, you gotta realize the bars are still open there at five thirty in the morning. That's, and that's they where were, you yeah. see the bulk of the horrible drunk driving accidents between five and six AM because you got people who are, you know, trying to clear out of there. Oh yeah, head on a swivel. I mean, I went fast, I went through all the lights, and I'd get there in a matter of a few minutes, but I didn't realize the yeah. cop was following me. He he didn't give me any ticket or anything because he understood. I, I said, you know why I'm going through the lights. And he said, oh, okay, that makes sense. And where are your shoes? <laughs> so I finally, you know, didn't even put my shoes on. He just let me go. Yeah. That's a, that is a great story, Matt. That, and there's people who will listen to this who maybe haven't been overseas yet. And there's the concept of laws. And then there's the concept of relaxed laws. And that was a country that definitely had relaxed laws. So, for example, if I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not advocating this at all, but maybe if you've been out and you've had a few too many to drink, it's an ideal country to live in that if you have to drive home because it's a perpetual traffic jam and yeah. you will never, you will never go over what, 15 miles an hour on your way home anyway. So if you hit a squirrel, this squirrel is going to bounce off and walk away because you just can't get going fast enough. I think they'll pull you over even if you, I mean, especially if you don't have beer bottles in your car, I think they pull you over, don't they? They expect yeah. you to be drinking in the car. It doesn't sound well, really safe, but we learned how to live there though, Matt. It was like live like, you know, when in Rome, you know, and we really acclimated to that country. And I, I agree. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people listening to this going, oh my God, I can't believe these guys, but you have to be there, right? Marge, who are we listening to? <laughs> Turn that dangerous. off, Marge. These guys are a little bit over the top. <laughs> yeah. This isn't good public radio, Martha. Please. I told you that, sure. that like my buddy Joe, he's going to love this just because of the pure entertainment value. And it's not just one person talking. It's, it's multiple, right? Yeah. Love your sense of humor, by the way. Yeah, any well, stories we... not about me? <laughs> What's that? You have more stories, but maybe we should do a whole cop episode. <laughs> we, geez, yeah, we technically could. 
I because I've got at least five, six solid legit cop score cop stories, and um, yeah, that would be a no brainer. Easy. It's like Law and Order Venezuela. <laughs> Or lack of law and order. No offense to the to the uh, Vino Tinto out there who might be listening, because you know we love that place. Yeah, so. we do. We do. We talk yeah. fondly of, just, of our stories. We do. We do definitely do. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, when you live in a place, well, and we'll talk more about that. But when you live in a place for, you know, were you in Benny five years? Yeah, I was there four. five years. Four years. You were four. there five. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the you know. Invariably, it did not start out great, but that place became a part of me and has remained a part of me since I've been gone. Just like living here in the Middle East, you know, this is my eighth year here now. And well, you know, I did not expect. We're going to get into you in the next episode. That's when I get to oh. do some some pointed, you know, I want to do some introduction of you and let the viewers know about who you are. And this one, we're just trying to give them a taste of what's coming up next, you know, what's coming up in the future. I think we're going to try yeah. these weekly. Right, we're gonna post a, a new episode a weekly. weekly. We have plenty to talk about. We have lots of people that we, we want email. to talk to. We Greg, have email. we have email. What is that? Oh no, anyway? isn't that your phone? That was my yeah, that's my phone. It picked it up. Huh? We already have fans. We haven't even released this yet, and we have fans. We should. We probably need to also get an email name so that our listeners can you know write in with hate mail directly to us. Yeah, I'll have to think of some kind of uh, an email address that goes along with our uh, jazzy intro, which we might change later on, too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to MPR's bootlegging episode of <laughs> Homemade oh. Butterscotch Gin. What oh, are boy. some other things you look forward to as uh, for episodes, Matt, that the viewers might, or the viewers, <laughs> no, the listeners? Uh, I think you also, oh, I, Dozens of topics, like, for example, what it's like to live overseas with pets, what it's like to travel with pets, living overseas with kids, having kids overseas, traveling with kids overseas, leaving your kids overseas to go travel. In our intro, that's why I mentioned that you're the family man. That's one reason why I mentioned you're the family man, I'm the solo man, because there's a lot to hear about from your family and other families yeah. that live overseas with us. That The family aspect is, is fantastic to listen to because yeah. the stories, the... The help that you can give other people, the experiences sure. that you've gone through. If you have a family and you're thinking of going overseas, don't do it. No, I'm kidding. Totally kidding. Right. You should do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, well, yeah, there's the benefits your kids get from living overseas. The benefits your kids get from being, you know, possibly the only Americans for months or miles or days um, or only North Americans or wherever it is you're from. Yeah, there's so many different things we need to to jump into we have travel hints right we have we have great Lots experiences travel traveling hints. together and around and not together we have travel all over the world and yeah, and yeah. traveling with kids or without kids it's a whole different story and we can offer a lot to our you've listeners. traveled with us you've traveled with us before we had kids you've traveled with us when we had kids you've traveled we've both traveled apart i've traveled because you had kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I've traveled far away because you had kids. I've traveled to you because you have kids. Exactly. There's so many yes. opportunities for us to share our knowledge. And through stories, I think the stories just salt and pepper it for us. You know, they give us that yeah. flavor of our, our episodes are going to be flavored with many stories as well as Lots information for people that want to travel. Once yeah, heck, and maybe even people that just like to travel might want to listen to this. Who knows? Gonna, yeah, once you start listening to this, you're going to want to travel. I have to warn our listeners that you will want to travel to some places and not travel to other places after we get done with our episodes here. You reminded me of a great story, but I won't tell it today. But you, We the, have time for another story as long as it's not about me. No, 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 because this one needs to have its own little section. I'll just call it the Jedi mind trick. Remind uh, me of another time to tell you the Jedi mind trick story. All it's right. Legit. We'll wait for our listeners and maybe they'll feed in a little bit with our, you know, once we get our audience out there, they'll be wanting and they'll be asking for that yes. Jedi mind trick story. Oh, it, and it's not even a trick. It was legitimate use of the force to manipulate the cognitive powers of local law enforcement. At I its love finest. It. I'm excited already. Can we, I just can't wait for that episode. Maybe we should record that one next and publish it later. 
Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So what else can we offer our, our audience for this first episode? We've been talking for a while now. It's good to open up the line to to draw some stakeholder feedback to see, hey, uh, guys, we want to hear about this or we want to learn more about this. What do you know about this? So I think we definitely got to open up to our 13 listeners and uh, we want to give them some opportunities to submit feedback so we can hit topics they want to know about too. Are you sure we're going to have 13 already? Because I know my mom is the only one that's ever going to listen to it on my end. Yeah, but if she shares it with her bridge club, that's, that's like 10. That's true. She doesn't know how to play so. bridge, but she might have a club. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So about 25, I'd say about 30 minutes for episodes, I think is our goal for our listeners. We're going to pump out once one a week, at least, if not some extra bonus ones as we get the urge. About 30 sure. minutes or so is a good idea. Just so you know, listeners, we are in two different cities right now in the Middle East, and Matt and I have just gone through a few things that we're going to go through for our our future episodes. Neither of us are presently at work, though. Neither of us are working currently. There are no students well, I mean, around. Well, that and our work day is technically done. Technically. So just if admin, you're hearing this, this is the end of a work day. I would never do this during a work day. Dripping with sarcasm. I love it. Our work day is a little bit different, and we'll get into that later. Just because the kids aren't here doesn't mean that we're not at school. That's right. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. That, absolutely. We got to talk about schedule. What different schedules are like based on cultures, religion, holidays, countries, oh, all that stuff. Our checklist is just growing. We have so much to offer. I guess part of it is that we just have to get it off our chest. I can't. I can't uh, hold it all in. I have so many stories. That's one of the reasons I wanted to podcast. Is that what you're thinking too? Or why did you want to put a podcast out that's not sports related? I just kind of like talking and I think it's fun talking to you and we usually have a pretty good time. So, and if it helps people, then I'm all for it. Like if we can give some people maybe even somewhat of an inkling of what it's like or what to expect, then. It's the best kept secret in the world of education. It is really, right? Well, I th well, not only in education, but uh, just there's so many people who don't look into tapping into the international workforce. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's not just education. Think of all the people it's we've met overseas field. that don't work in schools, right? That work in other fields right. that we've met. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's a broad spectrum of people that live overseas. It's not just teachers. Right. We are expats. Right. Yep. Expats. Hey, that might be our name right there. We are expats. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, let's should we right. wrap this one up and do another episode, do or do you want to keep talking? Yeah. It's up to you. I, yeah, we can wrap up, and we'll we'll start talking about what our next episode is. All right. Well, this has been Matt and Greg. Well. They're going to mix up. We should do our names. Otherwise, oh, I should we use do my that, own name. Gonna, <laughs> I did it wrong. Okay, this I'm, is They're going to think I'm the one with the buttery smooth voice and not you. Oh, no. No, you've got a radio voice, Matt. We just got to get the right mic for you. That's all. I still sound like I'm in a sidewalk. Well, it's, it's part of our setup. We need to figure it out. I think if it was okay. both of us face-to-face -face live with microphones, I think it'd be different than going through the uh, remote over the net. Sure. All right, let's do that. Well, we'll test it All out. Right. We'll have to listen to this and, and check it out. But to our listeners, we're going to be coming back at you. Next episode, I have Matt Judd is my guest instead of my uh, fellow host. You're going to be my guest, and I'm going to interview you about what got you into the overseas action and why you're even here doing a podcast with me, right? I can't wait. It's I can't wait be, either, so we'll see you on that it's one. It's going to be mediocre at best. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see if we can make it better than mediocre. <laughs> All right. <see laughs> well, I want to set a high standard for listeners. Well, we already set the bar really high, Matt. We did. Okay. I don't think people can keep up with us. I mean, this is going to shoot to 14 people real soon. Don't you think? Well, yeah. Just I want people to remember us when Spotify comes calling. Okay. All right. Well, let's see you in the next episode. I'm going to interview you, and we'll call it quits now. All right. Should we sign off? Sure, let's sign off. All right, go ahead. Okay, no, you. <laughs> well, this is expat Matt, the family guy, signing off. And Greg, the solo guy, signing off.